Hi guys, welcome back to another tech video, Linux video on my uh, Medium and YouTube channels uh, on uh, on Medium and YouTube. So today I'm looking at um, a quick video to um, show people, those interested, how to uh, change a couple of config files on Openbox. So what is Openbox? Uh, this is uh, this is the first question. So Openbox is a um, is a window manager. So basically. Um, if I just bring this over here, um, and maybe call us some screenshots, be easier to explain. Or yeah, Openbox basically is a window manager. So window managers fit within the hierarchy typically. Typically because you, I say typically because you can use them just by themselves. Uh, but more typically, they are a component of a uh, desktop um, desktop environment, which is also called a DE. And a DE is an integral component of a distro. A distro is a distribution. So you have many Linux distributions, Debian, Ubuntu, etc. And they differentiate, differentiate themselves based upon really the desktop environment that they uh, bring. And that changes the whole look and feel. Of course, there's more to it. There's package management systems that are different. Um, there are uh, software that's installed by default with each distro that's different. Um, this in, in a very classic way, for example, um, if I just call up here, um, the main Linux DEs, you have stuff like Genome, KDE, Cinnamon Mate, XFCE, and the one I'm using here is LXDE, LXDE is used to be the default desktop environment in, um, in Lubuntu, and now it's moved to LXQT. Uh, but it's one of the lightweight ones in this group. XF, XFCE would be lightweight, LXTE, and you can even have something like i3 um, tiling window manager. And uh, this is when, well, that's not exactly a um, window manager. You can see what this looks I use this for a year. It's a pretty crazy, uh, crazy setup. And this is what it looks like when you're running a window manager with basically without the extra things that make it into a desktop environment. You just have literally. Um, a kind of grid and you can use uh, there's one configuration file that you can use to manipulate move screens around in that grid and uh, a little thing at the bottom I believe this this is called Conkey if memory serves correctly and you can add little notifications into Conkey but it's not a um, I mean looking at that that does not look like what most people would recognize as a modern computing system so I like LXDE because I think it's a nice mix between being very lightweight and just having enough stuff that I don't need to spend all my day fiddling around with uh, configuration files and uh, and whatnot to get it to work. Uh, this is just a little bit too extreme for for even my liking. Um, so basically Openbox um, Openbox uh, comes with a number, is, is the window manager of choice in a number of DEs and in turn a number of distros. You can, you can have it running, uh, you can have LXD running in Arch and in uh, uh, this documentation here will explain, and uh, but yeah, it's most it's most ex most associated with LXDE, and LXDE in turn can be put on put upon Fedora, can be put upon Debian, uh, Lubuntu. That's not correct. It's now uh, it's now LXQT, Slackware, etc. The whole world of Linux distros is a massive mess. I used to play around with this uh, when I got into Linux, and now I've been using LXDE for ten years, and I'm very happy being, even though it's a little bit uh, occasionally buggy. Um, uh, basically stick with something you like um, and stick with it but if you are a fan of LXDE then you may want to and let me just bring this guy across here um, you may want to play around with uh, creating key bindings so that's the topic of uh, today's video uh, if I can locate my openbox file so basically you have um, this is where openbox lives it's home directory forward slash doc config forward slash openbox this is a very important directory doc config. Uh, if you are backing up just your home drive, and I, I tend to just back up um, my entire full disk offsite incrementally because um, I don't everything I I try to store everything, including you know I try to work in documents in Google Drive and do everything in the cloud. So that really it just kind of minimizes the risk to me of uh, it, it makes it easier to work across different computers and minimizes risk. Uh, but if you want to get up and running quickly, uh, this config file, as you can see, contains a lot of your configuration files. Atom, uh, auto key is in here, very useful. And you can see it's at the level of uh, just individual data entries. LibreOffice is in here as well. Git is in here. Um, 
my dictionary for example so that's where this lives and uh, my point about backups was that if you are backing up the whole folder don't exclude this because it is a uh, it begins in a dot so it's a hidden folder um, so if you go up a level here it's just to my home directory um, and we we don't have I'm just toggling control H so we can get the um, hidden files so if you're using something like Clydeberry which I'm running at the moment um, just make sure that you have the hidden hidden files enabled. So it's doc config uh, forward slash open box and I'm just going to drop now into a terminal and uh, that's F4 if you're using PCMANFM and uh, one thing I would recommend uh, doing, I've just done it, but uh, just to recreate that process just before you work on your LXDE it's good practice to take just a backup so uh, copy that file over to LXD or LXDRC and I usually just append the date so it's 080508 0520.xml. So I've just created a little backup copy before I begin working on it. So that if the changes uh, do something uh, disastrous, that I'll be able to just quickly reverse. Um, so I'm just going to open this in Atom. And uh, this is what it looks like it's one XML file that basically controls everything. It's not actually that complex when you kind of just like break, break it down, it's just creating a lot of behaviors of how the uh when how the how the window manager actually behaves in terms of when you're moving the windows across and what various key do what various keys do the basic structure if i just go down to my volume key bindings uh which should be there why are they not there this is a this is a this is a tricky question um key bindings let's let's bring in something that i know is here um let me just check quickly. Huh. Just completely curious. Anyway, I won't I won't get the video sidetracked. I'm trying to add some key bindings in here. Um, but basically, uh, what you can do over here is add in your um, add in your various um, custom custom key bindings. So I'll show you how to do that. The basic structure is really, really simple. You have key binding key, and then you have a little command in here, as you can see. Um, and uh, there's a couple of good ones I want to just kind of mention. Um, firstly, how to find keys. There is a uh, there's a utility here called uh, just bring the terminal back. Xev. And it's very uh, it's a very interesting tool, as you can see as I move my mouse, or it should be bringing it to focus as I move my mouse around the screen it's capturing the different uh, it's capturing the different uh, coordinates and what XEV is used for is I'm typing G sorry I'm typing H and you can see H showing up here um, with a couple more H J K and the last one if you look at the third line in key release event it's that uh, after key sim after the next thing uh, G that's the basic uh, uh, thing you're going to be using so for example if I do Uh, KP in capitals and underscore and then end um, so that's the down left bottom of my numeric keypad end down next end down next so I can even create a few key bindings now let's let's just do that let's let's create the volume ones that I'm missing I'm just setting up this Linux again um, I'm just gonna add a command here I'm just gonna say custom my custom volume key bindings um, oops and uh, we're just going to copy on one of these to save a little bit of typing uh, kp end down next we said so end so again end down so I use I'm using xev to find out the keys the keypad key and then and there's other programs that do this but this is a pretty easy easy one um, and then it's just the command so um, I'm trying to remember the command for Alsa mixer toggling reducing etc etc there's a couple floating around on the internet some work some don't uh, this is the toggle so I'm just gonna put the toggle on uh, I'm gonna work left to right volume down volume up volume toggle um, and uh do 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 <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
Yeah, this should do the trick. 50% up, that's too high a gap. So let's go for just 10%, um, 10% down, so that'll lower the volume 10%. Uh, this guy will raise it by 10%, 10% plus, and then the third key will uh, toggle between mute and unmuted the uh, master channel and alt mixer. So I'm just doing save, um, and then basically after you're, you've done editing um, um, the file, the configuration file, open box, minus, minus, tac, tac, reconfigure. Uh, you sometimes will get this OBT message, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the significance of that is, it always seems to work for me. Um, I'm just starting a YouTube video here. Let's see if there's some way you can demonstrate this. And volume. Okay. So that's how to add a few volume key bindings. Um, the other ones that you might be interested in using. And you can see here I've added uh, X screensaver. So that's the, it's kind of a basic screensaver tool. Um, but you can use that for, um, you know, for uh, locking the screen at one, at one click. This is a good one to use, uh, sudo pm suspend. And in order to have that work, you need a package called pm utils. Um, this basically bundles some scripts just for manipulating the power state of the computer. So you can use, if I type into my terminal, sudo pm and it needs to root uh, suspend, that will uh, put the computer into suspend. So every time that I want to turn down my computer at night, um, because I'm in the practice for many years now of not actually really ever turning the computer off, um, instead of going through, you know, the traditional logout option, do I, I do have suspend there. Um, I simply press scroll lock on that button on the keyboard and that will, with one click of the button, put stuff into suspend. This is a good one as well. Uh, the print, just print like that keypad is uh, by default um, attached to, uh, I'm not sure actually by default, but you can change it to flame shot. Um, Flameshot is a really good um, is a really good uh, screenshot uh, tool that I'm fond of. So if I click uh, print screen now, I get to this, and that's Flameshot GUI. If I just execute Flameshot without the GUI, I do not get to the uh, I do not get to the uh, the crosshair. So uh, Flameshot GUI, if if that's attached to Shutter, uh, for example, or some other screenshot utility, you can just edit. Um, you know, I would just search through this uh, XML file for print, and if it's attached to some other, I think this is what I did. I deleted whatever I was attached to and added my own key binding. So that's basically um, an easy way to add. And the sky's the limit. You can see I have attached pause to some. Um, I'm actually not sure what this is. It's probably yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a relic of an old um, relic of an old installation here because I pulled this down from GitHub. What you can do is for example um, I'm looking at my Chrome apps currently I'm looking at brain.fm and uh, if I go into you can see the command that, that that's running so what I can do here is copy that um, and I'm gonna tell you that so every time I click on uh, the pause button now if I just replace that with that and I run the reconfigure again now this should work so let me click pause here we go one two three and now you can see pause is opening my uh, the custom Chrome app that I've created for brain.fm, which is just one of these kind of uh, white noise things. So you get the idea, it's pretty simple. Um, the tools that you need are the open box configuration file, you need XEV, uh, which I will now close. And uh, between those two things, um, you can just edit, hand edit this file in order to create uh, custom key bindings if you're using LXTE on Ubuntu. Thanks for watching, any uh, feedback or thoughts or comments in the video uh, please drop me an email that's my website danielrosel.co.il thanks for watching